and welcome to The Dog in the Pond. We're a few shows in now, so you know the score. I'm Kelly, and each week, two past Hollyoaks cast members join me to tell me about their time on the show. We'll probably have some embarrassing stories, and we'll find out what they're up to now. So please welcome Ben Gerrard, a.k.a. Cameron Clark, and Kent Riley, a.k.a. Zach Ramsey. Hello. Hey, hey. How are Hi. you both? Boss, mate, boss. Really boss. good time. Do you know, I've not heard that for such a long time. Considering we spent like six years in Liverpool, I have not heard that for a very long time. But uh, you won't, you won't. How many scouts do you speak to on a day-to-day basis, Carl? You know what I mean? Quite a few, actually. Yeah, really? quite, quite, yeah quite a few of the clients are, are, are Liverpool clients. And none of them say boss. Not no. quite as. <laughs> not in the professional capacity. They're not going to go, yeah, yeah that audio was boss. True, 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 true. <laughs> okay, let's dive straight in there. So, Ben, before you started Hollywood, yeah. you were modelling, weren't you? Uh, yeah, yeah, I was at a model agency called um, Manchester Model Agency. I was actually at the same agency that Gemma started up. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. Um, and I did a couple of bits of extra work, as, as you do at most model agencies. Um and ended up getting asked to go for an audition, which was... Tell me about that audition, because wasn't it uh, slightly embarrassing? (laughs) There were loads of us, and it's... it's, I've not really done that much as far as acting goes at that point. It was never really something that was on the radar. It was something that I was only just sort of starting to look into as as an option, I guess, because I was only young. I was like 16, 17 or something when I started. Um... So, yeah, I went down to the audition, drove down in the old Peugeot 205 with four gears on the motorway, shrugging away like this, 40 mile an hour on the way. It was horrible. Um, just I turned up and yeah, I was nervous as hell. Never, like I said, I've not done anything like that. Um, and saw Joe Hallows and, and Dorothy casting. Um, no idea why. I decided to go right up to the faces, kiss them both on the cheeks individually go away do my lines and then exactly the same again at the end i went up to both of them kissed them both on the cheek twice and then left the room and as i left the room i thought i i came back into my body and thought <laughs> what the hell has just happened why did i do that i've never done that before in my life why would i do that then but, but it obviously worked because you, you got a job, up. yeah. And then on your your was it your first day? You um you got lost in the building. Yeah, yeah, I got completely lost. Um, Marcus Patrick found me wandering around. Could obviously tell that I was I was lost, uh, and offered to help, which was really kind. Nice. Um, but yeah, I've, I've it was it was so weird because like I said, I've not really done anything like before. Been through wardrobe, makeup, all that sort of stuff, and I phoned me mate. In the green room, I was on my own in the green room for a second. I was like, mate, what the hell am I doing here? I have no idea what I'm doing here. And then four and a half years later, I was still there. Yeah. And in the same question. But Ken, <laughs> didn't, didn't you have um, an interesting first day too? Because you were there originally for, was it around six months you came in the first time? With you guys, that's what yeah. I did originally, yeah, yeah. And it was literally, I think it was my first full day. I think I'd had like maybe one scene a couple of days prior. And my first full day was just stuff with me and me and Gemma with Gemma Atkinson, and literally, I was within probably an hour of being in makeup and and costume. I was on set, and it was about probably about what was it eight 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 thirty something like that. You went on set in the morning. In the morning, and we were both ripping into a full cooked chicken, supposed to be <laughs> sedu- supposed to be seductively. Because the, the story was that we'd been out, it was fresh as week, obviously we'd met each other and, you know, and, and the sparks fly. So we were literally coming in, supposed to be pissed, and literally a, a full chicken. We had to rip just rip the arms off, eating it in front of each other all. <laughs> chicken the arms. Well, that... that- yeah, that flat that we all because we had that was where our main story was, wasn't it? In the student flat, yeah, yeah. And I, and I think if those walls could speak, there would be some brilliant stories. Because I know Ben in Gemma's show, she mentioned about the rockets, but I think you've got a little bit of a confession, haven't you, as to why that memo might have actually gone round? 
<laughs> yeah, I watched that episode and I was I started cringing when she mentioned it. It was like, well, I think the memo might have been triggered by something that I did. Try just to join it in with you know with you reprobate. Oh um, right, yeah. <laughs> so I think she started it. I'm going to blame her. Yeah. But I thought it would be a good idea. We'd done this scene and there was a flip chart or something. I don't know what it was. It was a flip chart. And at the end of the scene, we'd turn the page over. So I decided, in my wisdom, to draw the most detailed. It was about two foot cock on the back of the, back of this sheet in in red marker, and it was so detailed. Oh, that was so detailed. It was ridiculous. And then they turned the cameras and the lights round and flipped over the page to shoot again. No, obviously this paper must have been incredibly thin because you could still see the cock on the other side once it turned the page over, ready for the next shot, and I just ruined continuity. Completely ruined it. Um, and I remember being pulled aside for that and being told off that particular day. Can't remember who, who, who it was. Who told you off? You don't know. Well, no idea. No idea. Can't remember who. I was that scared. Um, wow. <laughs> Yeah, it was um, it was one of my most memorable moments. Well, um, Lee, um, I asked Lee for some stories on you both, and he said I've not really got anything on Ben because they paint you as kind of the innocent one, Ben. And Alex said anything that, that I've got on Kent can't be broadcast. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what he's on about. I've no, him. I said, no. I said, I asked him, I got him on the phone. I went, what's this, mate? What are you talking about? And he was like, oh, no, mate, we can't. I can't even, he said to me, can't even speak to you on the phone about it. So I don't know what, he, what I don't know what he recorded. <laughs> In case someone's listening. I don't, exactly. I don't know what he recalls, but what One of the things that they did say was, Ben, you had a band in the show, didn't you? And Otway said that you had to wear some really tight pants, the three of you, these like lycra pants. And it was the best. <laughs> his face is, <laughs> is terrified what I'm going to say next, isn't he? And Otway's confessed. He's got them on now. He's got them on. Well, yeah. Otway's just confessed not... that yeah. you guys, being young guys at the time, might have had a little um, extra padding in those pants. <laughs> They did. They did. <laughs> 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 <Yeah>. <laughs> we changed the band name in the end. I think we were originally called the X Factor. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we changed the band name to Cameron and the Big Socks shortly afterwards. No. Is that what the pattern was in the in the, the Big Socks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I remember those days very well. Yeah. Ken, uh, Ben kind of dubbed you in slightly. So there was there was someone that we all worked with that was um, <laughs> maybe maybe this person <laughs> was slightly difficult. And I will not say whether it's male or female, and we're not going to mention this person, so I'll have to keep remembering to say this person. <laughs> um, but ben Can we not say that, the sex? Can we not tell the gender? But then people might work <laughs> work it out i like that though they do, do yeah you can, all right give them some clues then yeah yeah give them some clues so it was a female it was a female, oh, it was a, it was a female. A female. okay and um she was she was just just odd and and difficult really but yeah yeah straight a very strange yeah. girl yeah, yeah. and um Obviously, we say that Ben was very innocent, but he told the story of something to do with paper and her car. Do you remember that, Ken? <laughs> See, this is what I said. This is exactly what I said when we're on. I think so. Yeah, something rings a bell, but I wouldn't be able to tell you the specifics, so I'm going to let Ben explain it. Cause I Go on, Ben. The, she'd been, I mean, she'd, I don't know how early on to her arrival or her character's arrival this was so whether she'd been there a few months or a few weeks but she really I, know. Rubbed, I, I think it's coming back to me now <laughs> yeah, yeah she rubbed up a few people the wrong way um and i think it was it got to the point where it was really late this particular day and things just kept taking forever you know how she was um and he got to the end where we'd finished we'd gone back through water got ready to go home and it was it was pissing it down I know what he's going to say, I remember. 
we went into the green room, and I don't know whether it was just old scripts that we found, yeah. piles of scripts. That's exactly what it was. Cut them up into the tiniest squares, and we must have had a bag full. But we ran outside, found her car, and threw the paper over the car. <laughs> it was literally completely covered, ridiculously childish, yeah. but I thought it was funny at the time. And she deserved it. It was no. To be fair, it was hilarious, <laughs> and it was because it was like something off the cuff. We were like, oh, like I think the whole point of like our frustration was like it was. Yeah. It was like a over a, a really? month period of like <laughs> me, me. There was a point where me and Alex were taking bets just out of fun, and it wasn't to make fun of her, but it was more like, like let's play the game now to try and entertain ourselves whilst we're on set because it was literally like it was becoming like a task to get through scenes. Like, how many takes is her single going to be? But but it wasn't that... Because there's a lot of people that had never done anything before and if somebody yeah. come on and they were struggling yeah. and they yeah. were humble and, you yeah. know, yeah. everyone yeah. was kind of on board with helping, but there was, yeah, she no, was just something else. Well, it wasn't <laughs> even a case of... It, it, it kind of, like, it come to a point where... And I remember specifically that the, 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 um, the guys who were doing continuity were, like, there was a point where someone pulled her aside and gave her a book on <laughs> no no you're laughing but I'm serious <laughs> no gave her a book on continuity on understanding basically the the whole concept of you know matching what you'd done prior to so it was that and it was it wasn't like no one was not being helpful but it seemed to be just a case of for whatever reason nothing went in it was but it, just yeah. like it wasn't like complicated stuff like oh you've got to pick the mug up and sip on this line then put it back it was like literally just, just, just stand still <laughs> yeah don't go over don't go over to the sink and start making a, a, a drink when we've already established that you don't yeah, do that yeah she used to do that way. didn't she I remember it was Carl Pollard on camera and he just and he just said I've put a mark there where she should be stood because he knew <laughs> that she was just going to be wandering all over the fucking place it was just like yeah. there's a mark there we were yeah, like just, it was yeah, me Gem yeah. and Alex yeah cool thanks yeah 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 yeah. That, 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 that's it that was the thing so I mean yeah Ben once you said about the, the car I started thinking was it raining and it was just scripts stuck to a car all over the place so that that's exactly what i remember it now i remember it well but that that was that was the that was the uh, accumulation of, of months of like oh my god let's just get these scenes done mate and i think we'd all like we'd all had enough and we'd probably been out all day and whatever or in, on set at the same and it just didn't need to take as long as it did to be fair it could have been worse than cut up piece of paper it could have been it could have been it could have been <laughs> You could, could have, have left what she left. I was just about it could have been the contents of the 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 the, the set toilet. <laughs> Do you remember that, Ben? Do you remember I, that? Um, and pretty much bagged it up and smeared it on windscreen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I believe it is yours. Oh. And what's mad is just 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 as another kind of disclaimer, this person seemed to be so far out there. Even if she watches this, I don't even know. She'd know we're talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> we're coming across as like three witches of Macbeth. No, no, no. But but it was one of them things that kind of really, and I said it to you the other day when we were speaking, Cap. That for me, in the stuff that I've done, obviously prior and, and, and even since Hollywood, is the most surreal kind of yeah. thing that happened continuously. You know, you can have stuff on and you go, whoa, what happened there? But that was like a... a continuous like what's going what's and it wasn't going? just like it wasn't just like a couple of weeks either was it, it no just, no no it was for the duration it was for the duration yeah. of how she was there yeah. she was she was beautiful she, she was beautiful but you know what was <laughs> hey, do you know what was funny the, the most comical thing she done though and this is genius this in a way i think partly give me another kind of outlook on her. i was like actually you know what she just she could be a, a comedy genius here Remember when she come back after like two weeks off? She'd been off for two weeks. Come back and started saying, "Well, we were reading like the, the, doing a, a read through." She was reading it in an American accent and said, "I think, I think she, I think, I think she might, I think my character might be American." And we were like, <laughs> "Yeah, do you remember it?" 
I remember we like, that. We were like, we were like <laughs> no, um, mate, no, you can't. That's what you're on about. <laughs> You can't just do that. It was like she was. It was life. Do you know what it was like? It was like. Maybe she she'd did... read the book. <laughs> <laughs> she read it in American. <laughs> she read it in an American accent, and that was it. Then. See, if she'd have done it in American, she could have stuck to all the continuity. Exactly, 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 <laughs> exactly. Maybe that was their fault for just giving it in the first place. Then. Yeah, you know. Um, but you you left, and then you went back, and I'm intrigued about this because. We'd all gone when you went back, Ken. Mm-hmm. How was that? Was it? Did it feel like a completely different show, or did it just feel exactly the same? No, no, I don't think it, it didn't feel like a different show. But it was certainly it felt like a different dynamic in terms of kind of what 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 the show was was kind of gearing towards. You know, when I first come in, I come in because there was two producers come in who'd been on Footballers' Wives. I'd worked with them on that and. Obviously, they were casting for this. I'd come in. Obviously, they knew me, so it, you know it worked out. And then, I think once I come back, you know, there was n- none of you guys. I don't think. Well, actually, were you still there? You weren't even there, Ben. I don't think. I know. Kelly, no, you I, were, so, you I think you barely shortly after I'd had my last. Think, yeah, I think it was. It was quite. It was quite. But it was like so. All the people. I mean, it was kind of. It was you. It was you, Ben. You. Kel, Gemma, um, Alex, Alex, Otway, um, Otway, um, Helen, Helen? Yeah. yeah, 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 Helen. So that was kind of they were they were the the people I was filmed with. That was it. So when I come back, there was none of them. There was no one left. Um, and as I say, the, the the kind of the dynamic felt like it had shifted in terms of where the where they were taking the the program. However, I still come back as a as a student. Um, I actually can't remember how they introduced me back in. I should have looked that up. Because I was up. On. Yeah, because when I come in initially, it was obviously we were all joining as we were students. Yes. And then I left. I can't remember even how I left. But when I come back, it was like a new set of students. So it was like I'd started again. Maybe it took a year out or something like that. Maybe you failed your exams. It was most likely the case. <laughs> You had to uh, reset them. Yeah, yeah. So that was it. So when I started back up, it was brand new. It was like in the halls, but with a whole new set of students. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it felt it def- definitely felt different because, you know, as I say, the dynamic, but even like kind of getting used to different personalities of, you know, different characters and different, you know, different actors as well. Um, but it was fun. It was fun to kind of see the different kind of sides, you know what I mean? Was it still the same kind of, going out because we did have some yeah. pretty good nights yeah. out yeah yeah in fact i probably had it was probably i feel like it was probably a little bit more um what's the word decadent maybe when the second time that it was like proper <laughs> like you know what i mean it was like so we were the like, scallies is what you're saying they were the posh ones no no not even necessarily i don't think it was that no it was more like it was just literally like it was really kind of it was there was a, a certain culture, and it was. I don't think it was a case of, it. it, it I don't think it showed, but it was a, definitely a culture. The second time I went around, where everyone was like really on it. Do you know what I mean? Like, oh really? Loads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I just think it was the timing of kind of you know certain age groups and, and stuff like that coming in. You know what I mean? I think there was even more kind of younger. Yeah. I know it was quite. It was always a, a, quite a young show. But I don't know, I feel like there was a, lo- a lot more. There was more in- cast as well, wasn't there? That's because, what I mean. I th- yeah, there was, there was, yeah. the cast was bigger. But yeah, also yeah. as well, and we've, we've touched upon this loads on the shows, I imagine that's when social media started picking up. So, you know, people wanted to raise their own profile. Mm-hmm. You know, we didn't have any of that. We were, mm-hmm. you know, we were lucky in that sense that we didn't yeah. have any social media intervention at all. Well, that's it. I do think it was one of them. I think I, I, it's been a, an odd kind of transition, I imagine, for you know, for anyone in the, in you know, in the public eye, the iron and show business, though, because it's like, you know, everything now you can, you know, you can be scrutinised on everything, but something yeah. you say, something you do that you're not aware, you know, that you know is being caught on on camera and whatever. So, yeah, in, in as you say, in that sense, you know, the, the first time round, and certainly while you were there. Probably a little bit more uh, simpler life as a, as a kind of someone who was you know you know on the telly and you know was kind of a 
you know, in, in the public eye, so to speak. Um, yeah, yeah. So do you have, either of you, a favourite memory, a favourite onset memory or a particular storyline? I know, Ben, you said your, your memory's just shot. Yeah, I, I actually remember a few, um, just, just randomly, just being naked quite a lot. Were you? I remember there was, there was an episode that we did. Uh, was it Andrew Gunn directing it? We broke into the school. Um and I got drunk in the school and street. There was no one in it, but I just ran through the school with no clothes on. I remember spending about half that day with no clothes on, just one of them cups over my balls <laughs> and, a, and, a, and a dressing gown for most of the day. Yeah. And that's your, your favourite that, memory. That's your favourite memory, Ben. <laughs> favourite memory. That's one of my memories. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, no, my my character obviously had quite a few issues. He, uh, he tried, I think he tried to commit suicide twice. Yeah, um, and did you have, was it not like an OCD storyline? Is that yeah, yeah. the end? Yeah. yeah that's, so when I, I I got offered another year of contract at the end, and I I sort of said no at the time, um, because the storyline was sort of ongoing. They asked if I'd stay until the actual storyline had finished. So I said yeah, and they gave me I think it was about another three months or something like that on the contract just to make sure it had finished out right because it's you know it's a worthwhile storyline trying to do. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's how he left. Eventually, coming to terms with it and then being able to manage it, and actually left to join a band, coincidentally, which is actually one of. Uh, the the reasons or well, one of the reasons that I left to focus on doing music. Yeah, because you set up a band when you left, didn't you? Yeah, well, I'd actually been in the band. I'd started the band a few days before I got the phone call to say I got the part on Hollyoaks. So I've been in the band throughout the, the, that period of time, but it just got to that stage at the end where I had obviously made a bit of money from from the show, and I'd had I don't know still an element of youth on my side and I just wanted to give it a go whilst I possibly could. So that yeah. was one of the reasons I chose to leave. Yeah. And what about your memories, Ken? Do you remember being naked? Was that your favourite memory too? Yeah, yeah, that was... That, that ben, was, be I mean, make... ben, 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 ben being naked. naked was my favourite memory. <laughs> I wasn't even in at the time. I don't think I was there then. I just seen it on the telly. That was my favourite memory. <laughs> um, no, but... Yeah, I was naked loads of times. I had all sorts. We were doing. We actually done a full Monty like episode where we had to strip from like it from police costumes. So I think listen, it was one of them. We it back in the day. It was probably every six episodes. Someone was someone. It probably wasn't even six, was it? It was probably every third episode. Someone had the top off, or someone was naked in a party. Do you know what I mean? Um. But yeah, there's loads, there's loads. I mean, one of the funny storylines, it was the second time I come back, I think when I was explaining it to you the other day, was um, we'd moved into another, like another apartment, like people, that, that, like the halls had been kind of, we'd moved out of them and we were in another apartment, but we were still in, we were still studying. And um, in, the, in the moving process, we found money in the attics. It was like a shallow grave type story where... We were like, what do we do? Do we keep it up there? Do we just spend it? What do? And then someone come to look for it. Someone, I don't know whether someone had got wind of it or whatever, but someone was knocking on the door, basically trying to get the money. Um, <laughs> just like they said the other day, like some of the stuff, like the stuff that obviously I couldn't necessarily explain <laughs> on this, but like um, just the whole the kind of the camaraderie of us all having a laugh and uh, like some of the, the the scenes we've done if you watch if i could find the episode we'd have to reference it because it's too it's too funny not to probably every scene in there whilst that's going on where we're all just and i don't know what it was particularly but we're all ready to just corpse at any point like <laughs> i think it was just the cut of the whole kind of i don't know whether i don't i can't remember why it becomes so like it was just a really mad storyline in the end of it we were like what, what what's, going on? What, what, what's going on do you know what i mean so there was a point where we were like oh my god and there's like scenes where like I'm, I, I mentioned gone and i tried to get gone on but he couldn't get on today but like he was he's really kind of just naturally quite funny and like there was loads of times where like his 
his reaction shot would be something like like this, no joke. <laughs> on and it, there was a scene where it cut like the end of the episode. It may have even been. It ended on his reaction shot, which was like, <laughs> "What's he doing? What's he doing? What's he doing?" But like <laughs> competing with himself to get a more ridiculous shot. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And I don't think it was a kind of. It wasn't. It wasn't in a, in a, in a disrespectful way. It was just a literally a kind of like where we were all like, "Oh my God, what's going on?" You know what I mean? But um. <laughs> That's one of the, I mean, there's loads. I think in, in the time that obviously you guys were there and we worked together and, and when I went back, I think it's one of them. I, I've always maintained the actual process of filming something like Hollyoaks or particularly for, you know, Hollyoaks was a really kind of um, kind of fun, kind of carefree kind of feel to it. I mean, you know, everyone took the job seriously and there was definitely a level of professionalism, but everyone just seemed to be able to do it with kind of, a bit of a smile on the face and, and definitely kind of, with a little bit of, I don't know, a little bit of kind of comedy in terms of a little bit of fun to it, you know what I mean? I, I, I think I've you always... probably had to have that because of the energy of the show. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it, yeah, you yeah. know, we, we didn't take ourselves too seriously yeah, as a show. Yeah. We were always, for years and years, the underdog in any of the award ceremonies or anything like that. So actually... Mm-hmm we didn't need to prove anything really so we could just enjoy ourselves yeah, but I think yeah. that did show and particularly with like the relationship that we all had mm-hmm. I think that was a, a really nice time and I think it did show on screen it did that's what I mean it definitely did and I think you know there's certain you know elements that you know sometimes that you can capture and further down the line, people try and, you know, maybe recreate that type of, as you say, that type of energy or that type of vibe and whatever. And it's just, if, if it's not there, you can't. And I think, as you said, we, we all work really well. And then even when I went back, the, 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 the next set of kind of the students, again, I think were really, really spot on in terms of the, you know, the, the kind of the dynamic between them. So, yeah, I mean, I've always said it when, when what better? The way- you know, the way it was filmed, I think they had to do it that way as well. They had you had to keep the energy up anyway because it was all one camera yeah. shots. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. It was incredibly sort of fast paced as well mm-hmm. compared to other shows where you've got two, three cameras on you mm-hmm. at any particular time. You've got to keep the energy up because you've got to get your continuity right. Again, coming back to that, after turning the cameras around four or five times, you, you've got to keep it up. And I think mm-hmm. if you haven't got that energy to do that then it obviously comes across but we we managed it we were comfortable doing it so i think there was also like um a responsibility to the crew certainly from me like because they worked the hardest like we had an easy job compared to to those guys and so for me there was like a responsibility to to do your best for the crew because they were working their asses off um, yeah. And I think we did have fun, um, you know, we did enjoy it, but we were professional and made sure that we turned up, we knew what we were doing and we and we kind of delivered. I, d- I think if you'd have just turned up all the time, not knowing what you were doing, having no respect for it, it would have been very disrespectful to the crew, I think. And, and it would have showed as well. And I think for whatever people's judgments were on Hollyoaks, you know, back in the day, and as you say, it was kind of, they always looked at the underdog or it wasn't. But I think... The whole idea was is that in terms of what was getting put out, there was a certain level of, um, as I say, the ethos for me was always just about kind of that, that feel of like nice kind of fun, kind of not, as you say, not taking self too serious, but telling stories. And essentially that's 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 all it is, is you know, we're telling stories and it's for people's kind of entertainment at half six. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> How long were you on it for the second time? Um just over three years, three, wow. maybe three and a half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then but, wh- when you left, you went on to do quite a lot of other stuff, didn't you? Well, you'd done stuff before because I did a little bit of Googling. Weren't you the Artful Dodger? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. <laughs> I, you, do you know how desperately I tried to find a clip of that? <laughs> oh, mate, if you find a clip, Carl, send me it because I've I looked at that. No I one. couldn't find it. I but really couldn't find it. I'll keep searching. Things. Please, please, because that's one of the things that I'd love to have kind of got, like, just to show, like, you know, the kids and stuff. But, like, honestly, the that was me first. That was me first proper professional. That was me first paid job, really. It was like, a big gig, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, because it was, it was, obviously, I can't remember, that was maybe 13. So the licensing days were, like, <laughs> you can only do, like, 40 days or something or 60. I don't I can't remember what it was, but 
I was there for three months, or the stint was three months from, or maybe just just over, from August and September near, to near Christmas. And where was it? Where was the show? In the, on the Palladium, the London Palladium. Yeah. That's but, mega, that, isn't it? That was brilliant. But it was back and forward each week. It was one week there, and then I'd come back home, and I'd be in school for a week, and then I'd get back, go back there. I was performing there. But while I was there, I was going to, obviously, it was, it was crazy, to be honest, because while I was there, in the day, I was going to Sylvia Young Theatre School. That was kind of what they'd arranged, obviously, for all the kids. So I'd be there, then I'd be doing performances all week. Then I'd be back home just doing normal kind of school life. <laughs> And then back, back there. But that was for like three months, so it was it was absolutely mental time. But it was great first job. Well, great first job. To oh, that, no, I was going to say it's probably me most kind of you know me me best kind of memory in terms of me you know me acting career because it was like it was my first like adventure. Do you know what I mean? And I do pull my mum and dad up on it always because I go, hey, I was like only thirteen, you know, and I was like. I don't know whether you knew because I don't know whether they understood what the chaperone entailed. Like the chaperone, like made sure we got picked up at the end of the the show. They come and picked us up and drove us to, back to where we were staying. But then during the day, I'd get up and I'd just walk to the train station and <laughs> go into central London. <laughs> like I'd go on the trains either to to. Sylvia Young, or if it was maybe whatever it was, I'd, and I wasn't in there, I'd just go and walk around and have a look in Hamleys. <laughs> oh, that's serious. That's serious. And I say, I say, I was 13. Like, I don't know whether I could do that. Like, like my 13 year old kid go and walk around London on their own. <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> but you say that it was a really good job, but you've done some cracking gigs since leaving Hollyoaks, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. I mean, kind of the probably the the most excited I was was um, when I done Scylla. And it was because before I'd done um, Oliver, I'd done Bugsy Malone for the National Youth Music Theatre when I was a kid, when I was proper young. And I'd worked with, I played Bugsy and Sheridan played Tallulah. Oh, wow. So I've known Sheridan since I was 11, and she was maybe 14, 15. So, um, when that happened, when Scylla was happening and I heard about it, I was like, oh, I've got to, got to get in this. It'll be filmed in Liverpool. It's obviously based, you know, it's based. I've got to get in this. So I went for the audition and I'd seen, I'd, I'd spoke to Sheridan, but it was a few months prior to hearing about the show. So I didn't know that she was doing this. And then something started coming out and she'd mentioned about her changing her, dying her hair or something. And I was like, she's... She's playing Scylla, isn't she? <laughs> so I went, to, I got the audition and I went in. I had my audition and I was like to them, hey, is Sheridan playing Scylla? And they were like, yeah, but don't tell no one because it hasn't been confirmed yet. And I was like, oh, all right, Sam. <laughs> and then, yeah, obviously when I got that, I was buzzing. And it was just because it was something that was obviously, I love kind of any period piece. Like, my mum's always gone to me, hey, you do, you do well in all them period. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I feel like, I don't know, it's just one of them things. It's, kind of, it's almost more fun to be like, the dress up and all that, it's almost like, do you know what I mean? As, yeah. as an actor, you're like, yes, I'm yeah. properly doing it here. I've got like a top hat on, you know, or like whatever, do you know what I mean? <laughs> so, um, Is so that not went, just like your fancy dress dream? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, but no, um, so yeah, that, obviously that was a brilliant one. That I was really chuffed to kind of be involved in that just because it was, it, as I say, it was a period piece. It was just, it was a, such a cool period of time they were telling the story of. And, you know, working with them, obviously Paul, who I've worked with since, twice since, really, really kind of really cool director, really kind of just nice given and, and knows what, it, you know, the story he's telling. So, yeah, that was brilliant. And then, obviously, I worked with him on a small, a small, oh, it was a small part on Little Boy Blue about the Reese Jones murder, which was obviously, that was kind of, that was a mad one because that was, it was, you know, I was proud to be involved in that because it was a story that, although people know, it's still not one that's, you know, it's not forgotten and it's it's only kind of recent memory, but it's still quite relevant in the, you know, the culture that certainly the the gang and gun culture that there is touching on it and kind of just showing the 
the real aftermath, I think, is that was the most important story. Kind of seeing that the you know the breakup of you know the family and stuff, telling that story and, and kind of hoping that I think that the point of it is to kind of if anyone's in limbo of like oh we're seeing that you'd hope that they go don't know whether you don't know whether that's for me you know all this because. <laughs> But that's like it, change that's the it, direction of you know, the route yeah, that they yeah, say. That's what, you, that's what you'd hope for. And I think because some stuff like that, you can I could imagine some people question, why are they telling the story? What's the reason for, you know, because it's, so, it's so harrowing and, and, and so yeah. sad. What was the reason? And I think that is it, is the kind of, you've got to see, you've got to understand the kind of... Well, yeah, because if one, you know, even if just out. one person watches it and goes, that's actually, it. I'm going to... I'm not going down that path. That's then, it. That's it. Yeah. That's it. And, yeah. and just because you know, especially because it is a lot of the time it's young kids who've you know maybe not got no direction, whatever. That they're the type of people that end up in that. So just to see anyone, you know, as you say, if anyone can go. Oh, I don't know whether I don't know whether I want to you know go down that road. Because as I say, I think people don't get. I think that a lot of the time now you don't really understand. And there's no why would you the fallout of something that tragic within, yeah. as you say, within a family. You know what I mean? So yeah, there's that that and yeah, as I said the other day, Cal, I've just finished well just before the lockdown happened, I just finished filming something in Manchester, which was um for Sky One, which Alex was on. I said I said to him I'd, yeah. I'd, I'd, I'd found that out while I was filming. And only the other day when he was texting me, I was like, Hey, why did we never speak about what what, what happened? What what were you doing in it? Do you know what I mean? And <laughs> why did we not work together on it? You know what I mean? And do we know when that's coming out yet, do you? I don't think they, cause they never got to. I don't think they got to finish the. Uh, wow. I think they were probably around six, six, six weeks from f- completing. Yeah. And it's all come to a standstill. So it may not have been that long actually. Maybe I don't know four or five. But um, I don't know. As I said to you the other day, I think I think the original kind of idea was maybe early next year. Yeah. So whether they get it done and it still stays, or I don't know whether they even try and maybe bring it forward because it's something that they've got there done yeah you know what i mean yeah. you know with not being on the telly soon yeah um, so yeah so by the way this is also why we're talking about this have, have, have we all I, I mean i haven't but has anyone appeared on these flashbacks episodes have they stopped now broadcasting hollyoaks is no they're flash- still doing hashtag hollyoaks favorites they're still doing them and that's what i meant sorry so uh, uh, is is it full episodes or what, what yeah yeah so i think um, i probably should know this i think because they've stopped filming and they haven't got enough episodes they've um doing now three two or three um three a week hollyoaks favorites episodes i think so like old episodes. So I know that we're well, doing that, the, the Cindy have you been one. On, has you, have you been on any? I haven't had a check if I have. Is that why you're asking? <laughs> no. I just went if you had seen Ben, what about you? Have you seen I don't think so. I don't think they I think they I think they've been like they've either gone really far back to the beginning or they've gone far back but not far enough for us all this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, be cooler, wouldn't it? Just to see see that one another app on the telly again was was all us. Yeah, that'd be quite nice to see all that. It'd be funny to show the kids, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. Imagine no looking, going, "Oh my god, I have an half age," you know. Oh, don't, don't. He's <laughs> killing me. So Ben, when you left, you left. You yeah. touched upon it before to do music, didn't you? <clears throat> and you and you toured with your band for a while. Yeah, I did. I did. Yeah. Well, I went and um, I literally went all out. I I bought a tour bus and we you know we were only three piece band so you there's only me and a tour bus. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like, like ben. Huge, huge, like you David, know david brent life on the road yeah yeah, yeah. Well, sort of like that in, in that way yeah um was but, it a caravan ben it was it was it was like a winnie a winnie vago wasn't it? a bit bigger than a winnie vago um with a splitter in the back so you know we got all our stuff in and we had we had bunk beds in the back we put a tv in there we carpeted the walls we had a venetian blind on the window as well we were top notch um <laughs> we, we we pretty much we, we toured and toured um to the point where we then you know we we had we sort of made we funded ourselves whilst we were doing it we made money to record and then we went on tour again and then we made money to record again and we just did that cycle um but again a few years a few years well, maybe five six years passed and then uh you know people grow up things change so i i actually settled down with my wife who i live with now with our two little girls um and 
Owen and James, the bass player and drummer, they were both living in the centre of Manchester. It was just difficult to get together and you know rehearse and write and stuff. So um, we call it a day, sort of quite amicably. Um, but I I actually missed the performance side of it. Um, although going on tour wasn't something that you can sort of necessarily do when you've got a wife and kids and a mortgage at home. Um, <laughs> So I sort of fell into this conundrum of what do I do? How do I do I go out and do my own acoustic stuff or or, or what? And it was actually my wife's idea. I actually I do um, a Michael Bublé tribute. But hold yeah. on a minute, you're like you're playing it down. I've seen your videos; they are awesome. I and I'm like a massive fan of Bublé, so I'm like all over this. But I've seen your videos, <laughs> and I'm like, oh my god, yeah. Like, I want to, like, get married again to the same husband yeah. just so we can have you at our wedding to sing. <laughs> nice. <laughs> In fact, you. you could you could do the singing when we have our Hollyoaks reunion. I could. Yeah. There you yeah. go. You yeah. could do a turn. Yeah, but that would yeah. just turn into, like, terrible karaoke with everyone going, Ben, can I have a go? <laughs> yeah. Ben, can I yeah. do this? Probably me, to be fair. Yeah. No, I was like, going to say as well, do you, know, do you know when I've had a bevy, I'm an absolute pest for the karaoke or any type of mic. <laughs> <laughs> you know, by the way, just speaking there about the Hollyoaks reunion, just one yeah. thing, I, I mean, just remember it being kind of right, like the first like party party I went to, I think it was ever before the Soap Awards, they had a Christmas party and it was when, it was when they changed hands and it wasn't no longer, um, Mersey. Yeah. So it was kind of a really overblown party where like remember there was like big like robots walking around do you remember that was that the one where they had like a fun fair yeah. remember this the, the fun fair outside yeah i remember the fun fair anyway yeah 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 they had, like, they had like, people, like people who were obviously like still walkers we were like on in, yeah like, i this, do remember it uh, it was like a nine foot robot <laughs> like, walking around <laughs> And I remember I was absolutely pissed and I was going, hey, this isn't good, you know, when you've had a baby, this looks like, like something proper heavy, like this robot coming up. It was like a Robocop type character. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And I thought, uh, they're going to ask me to search me in a minute and everything. Never had nothing on me. I was never like that, do you know what I mean? But... <laughs> We had some good yeah. parties actually. Oh, they were brilliant. Mersey they were parties some brilliant, brilliant parties. Yeah. That was that was the best one they had in there because I remember they used to have obviously each year was we go like maybe elsewhere and whatever, but that one they had in there was at, at, the, at Mersey at Campus Manor. Yeah. Yeah yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So yeah, so Ben on our reunion, you're gonna have to come and do some buble singing, and we can oh, put a link yeah. to your to your website and stuff. But if anyone yes. wants a Michael Bublé tribute when we're out of lockdown, although I did yeah. see something today on Twitter and it was um, a famous singer saying, I don't know if they were being serious or not, saying, look, I've not got any gigs anymore, so if you want me to come into your garden to sing, I will. Really? <laughs> yeah, maybe um, you should do that, Bublé in the garden. It has to yeah. a better a better ring to it because that doesn't, doesn't any sound great. Any booking will be accepted at this stage, any bookings at all, whether it be in your garden or whether it be in your shed or your living room or just outside the window, it's fine. Whatever you want to throw at me, I'll accept. But I see, madly enough, to, you know, the garden, I've seen someone talking about Bublé, where he lives, and, like, not specifically as a joke, like, he literally just comes out for Christmas, doesn't he? Yeah. <laughs> Do you, <laughs> you know get I mean? more bookings at Christmas, Ben? Oh, yeah, it's crazy. I had to stop, for, I had to stop doing it for about a year because I just got that overworked. Um, from November through to midway through January, I was doing um, five, five, six gigs a week and really? DJing after it as well. Really? Um, exhausted. I mean, the money's great doing it. it that's fantastic. But I, it was just killing me for, for a year or two. I did that and I just couldn't. Um, it got a day again. I just, like, when you're away, it's like panto. I did I did a couple of pantos after after finishing all the oaks as well, and it was just a case of I had young kids at the time, and I missed Christmas for about two years, um, and I just sort of said I'm not doing that again anytime soon until they lifted until they've grown up a bit. Yeah. So missed. Well, you've both touched upon being fathers because you've both got two kids, haven't you? Mm. Mm-hmm. I didn't know you had Ken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A bit of boy and a, a, a girl who's nine. Oh, you, have you got two girls, Ben? Yeah, two girls. Yeah, they're nine and five. Like, no, do you five. feel old enough to have a nine-year-old? Because I really don't. 
like like I get up sometimes and I go, how the fuck someone let me be in charge of a nine year old? Like <laughs> how, how did that happen? Like <laughs> when you get to nine, Carl Laird in charge of you, mate. That's what oh, happens. Don't even. No, That's my nine year old is the five year old you've got to watch out for. She is me. She's absolutely me. She's like a face, honestly. And she's built like a rugby player. She would take you out full on. Really? Yeah. That must be a second child thing because ours is Josie. She's five. She's she's a wrestler. She will either be um, a wrestler, a rugby player, or she'll be in the UFC at some point. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> she's fighting with Jess now. Night. She's fighting with her over literally nothing, but like proper fight, like wrestling headlock yeah, on the sofa, yeah, yeah. diving off. You know, doing a elbow drop on her or something like that. <laughs> But well, yeah, I, it must be a child thing. I said to Matilda the other day, come on, princess. And she looked at me, she went, I am not a princess. I'm a warrior. Really? Like, yes, you are. Yes, yeah. you are. Really? I'm quite liking <laughs> that one. But yeah, so I think life as a dad, how is it? It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's chaotic. I find I've got no time for anything <laughs> at all. Because, I've got, you know, I've got to build some sort of doll's house or a, a new <laughs> put, make bunk beds out of nothing and you, know, you, you must be the same Ken I've got no time at all well I'm literally like I don't know whether I'll end up with some form of schizophrenia because I, I literally like play different characters like throughout the whole day and <laughs> I, I no mean it or person, multiple personality disorder literally so the little boy will say like dad do this say this now right I'm him you're him and I go, okay. And then he'll come in and he'll say something else. And I'll go, hang on, are you mine now? And he'll go, no, you're, you're Buzz now. And I'll go, oh, like, and I'm doing all, like, the voices and all that. And he's like, no, 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 no. And I'm like, oh, mate. And then, and then we little girl will be going, Dad, look at this. Now, let me show you this TikTok routine. Watch, watch, watch. And I'm just like, what's going on, mate? What's going on? <laughs> yeah. Well, when it's quiet, you think, why is it so quiet? Yeah, 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 <laughs> so, yeah. There's something wrong. Well, it's weird. It's weird now, now because my mum and dad, my me, me youngest brother's moved out now with his, his missus. So my mum and dad now are in the house on their own. And literally for the last, I can't think how many years, any time that we're in the house and we turn up or whatever, it's literally like mayhem. <laughs> no, literally, we, we've labelled it, we got labelled years ago, the madhouse, because literally any time that everyone's together, it's just chaos. And it's mad to even look at like, I mean, my dad are relatively still young. You know, they're both yeah. in the 50s, you know what I mean? But it's like, looking at it where, like, they're now just in the 50s, they're in the house, nice house, but it's like they're just on their own now. And it's like, that's weird. That, that's like, that's weird, you know what I mean? So I can imagine getting to that stage where you're like, oh, my God, now there's literally just us again. <laughs> I have to start liking you again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have to talk again, what? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but that's what I mean. It's mad, isn't it? Just kind of how how much of your time's taken up with mm. with with kids. I always say it's the best thing that I ever did. And when I was younger, I said I'm not getting married and I'm not having kids. And I always kind of saw it as maybe a bit of a failure, like never actually doing anything with your life. And I got married and had kids, and I can honestly say, and it's so cheesy, but it's the best thing I've ever done, hands yeah. down. The children are the best thing that I've ever done. And they drive me insane sometimes, but it is brilliant. You can't, you know, you can't complain. I think what's mad is as well is that, that, as you say, is like, what did you do before you had kids? Like, what did you actually do with your day? What did you do? (laughs) I don't know. I have no idea. I can't remember. I I can't remember. I mean, I can't remember anything. But I can't remember (laughs) what, you know, what sort of that level of freedom used to be like. Yeah. It doesn't bother me because, you know, I, I love the time I spend with kids. Do you find at the end of the day when you, your kids are in bed, it takes about half an hour for you, your head to sort of stop <laughs> shaking? You, you, you know? realise you're still watching Peppa Pig. You're like, why? Yeah. why? Yeah. Just the CBeebies logo on yeah. TV. <laughs> yeah, they've gone to bed now. It's like, see you in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. So say something like, yeah. see you at 5.30. And I'm thinking, you better, you're not. Yeah. I ain't getting up at 5.30. You can fung right off. (laughs) So if you were going to sum up your Hollyoaks time in three words 
And Kath Del Blyton and Andy McNair both did about 40 sentences. But in three words, or, or around there, what would it be? Um... It's good airtime, this though, these faces. I'm used to just a few salad going. Uh, um, it's really entertaining. Uh, uh, fun, uh, challenging, uh, chaos. I've got one, I've got one. It's not three words, it's a sentence. Cal- Go on. That's cheating. Plum gobbed rugger bugger with a block of wood for the head. What? <laughs> that, was one of me, that was one of my sentences that I had to say on the show. No, a line. That was a line that I had to say on the show that aired. And I was like, wow, that, I thought that they'd think that that sounds mental. That can't go out. That's just mad. It doesn't even but sound say again, like. Say again, what, what is it? This was how I had to say it. I had to say, because I was kicking off, there was a, a row, and he said, you're a thieving scouser to me. And I went, and you're just a plum-gobbed rugger-bugger with a block of wood for a head. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I can, I can see why it would offend him so much. I might try to work out that if you say it really fast, does it like, it's you know, like it, the no, tongue no, twisters not, where you... No, no. The pheasants no, no, no. and all that. Just, the, only, no. the, only, the only other time that there was any kind of, like, not friction, but, like, like, oh, Kent, you've got, you can't just go on, you can't just get on to set and, like, change your line. It was like, okay, I'll, if we can't, I'll try and, you know, flag it up before or whatever. Um, but then it got to a point where, like, I thought, I can't, they were saying, look, if you, if you haven't brought it up before you get on set, you can't change it. So I was like, okay. And as I said to you the other day, Kel, you know, once you're in that kind of routine and you're getting up and there's new script coming all the time, it's like, sometimes you don't get to look through a whole script and go, what I oh, know that I don't know if that line makes any sense because you just kind of right okay I've got two more script right so sometimes you're only looking over them maybe the night before mm-hmm. to film it the next day I don't think I'm unreasonable that happened often yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you were doing you were doing 16 17 yeah. things a day <laughs> yeah. you couldn't have them all in your head yeah yeah so you're looking over them the night before so you go oh hang on what's that <clears throat> so I just got to a point where I was like I can't I, I've just got to say it so I said it with full conviction. <laughs> <laughs> and then later down the line, maybe two weeks later, something got mentioned and they were like, Kent, what's going on? And I said, look, the other day, let's just make it clear, two weeks ago, I had to say this line and I can't believe that before it got to me, no one went, hang on, this is a bit mad, you know, what, what's he saying? <laughs> what's he saying? <laughs> what's, he, what's he saying? And if the writer of that, if the writer of that line watches this, I, I, I wholeheartedly apologise for like, no tearing into your craft but it, that particular line I didn't I, I, I don't know I still wouldn't know what what the point of it was what, the point? what was it what, what? Well, speaking of getting into trouble the only time I got into trouble for changing anything um was your accent you come back American didn't you? yeah I did <laughs> <laughs> oh damn you rumbled me um no there was a um, a line in the script where someone had to say to me well you're a gap tooth pig and so we were coming up to filming it and I got called into the office by one of the new producers I think it was it might have even been Juliet but I can't quite remember and she said uh, do you have something to tell us and I was like mm, not that I know of and she's like smile and I was like okay and I'd had my teeth like I used to have a really big gap in my teeth and it looked like I had a missing tooth on tv and I'd had the gap filled in and not told them but then we were due to film a scene where someone said you, you're a gap tooth pig and I had it filled in and I didn't have a gap anymore <laughs> to be fair hey to be fair Cal, you were right to get it filled in just to ruin that line because I feel like it's a little bit harsh isn't it well, imagine getting caught yeah. that Oh no, there's there's so many things. So there was um was something that I was watching, and I think I put it on the WhatsApp group the other day, where I don't know what had happened. Someone had split up with Zara, and Zara's crying, and um Adam, the brother, comes over, and oh, yeah. she goes, "I'm at that minging," and you see Dave Brown like laugh, like as Dave Brown, <laughs> not as Adam, <laughs> the brother, as Dave Brown going, mm, probably yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I get my I get my back on him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um. 
I think we're kind of done. And you've summed mm-hmm. it up in your three words or your however many very strange My words. My yeah, and if the writer is watching, maybe they could uh, drop you an email, just let you know Shed what. Some light. Yeah, Shed what some the light. motivation behind that line was, Kent. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'd love to know. You know <laughs> I think we'd all love to know at this point. There's probably a few million people who watched it who went, ah, what, what, what? Go on, <laughs> say it again one more time. You're just a plum gobbed rugger bugger with a block of wood for a head. <laughs> That's a line. That is a line. Isn't it? Conviction and the delivery it's and everything. Absolute, that's an absolute corker. It's a peach, isn't it? Yeah. If I had to sum it up, though, to three words, it'd be, as, as Ben said, I had a lot of fun. And it was a real education in terms of kind of like logistics of kind of, you know, you'd have to think on your feet often with regards to kind of knowing where you're going for hitting your mark and stuff, or you're kind of crossing the everything. You know, from a technical point of view, you learned really quickly because... Yeah. <clears throat> You had to, you had yeah. to, you know what I mean. You couldn't, you know, and that, and that, to to a certain degree, touching base on the, you know, the the mystery lady we were talking about, I do feel a, a little bit of sympathy because if it was the case that you couldn't really hit the ground running, you probably would have, you were probably going to end up struggling because you had you had to kind of from the off start really kind of you know picking up speed on you know the processes of getting your scenes done. Not really a lot of hit rehearsal time. <clears throat> As you say, only one camera. So you were doing a load of different, you know, load of takes, different. And so I, I feel like, you know, from that point of view, yeah, we pro- probably have to give it a little bit of credit because obviously. No, 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 <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, there were some people that come in and, and struggled in the way that you're describing, and everyone kind of put an arm around them, give them a hug, explained things, and they were really you- keen to learn. She, No, she wasn't in that group. This is true, but you know what's actually mad? No, that is true, that is true. But you know what's actually mad about what my biggest lesson about here was? Is that it showed me how how well editing can actually yeah. make people look well <laughs> better than they are. That's why you have to make friends with the editors always. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean, though? Because I'd watch it and go, hang on, this, this isn't <laughs> half bad. <laughs> This was a nightmare to film. But if we have thought it was a nightmare, imagine what the editors mm. must have thought. True, true. Imagine what they're... They must there. have some stories, mustn't they? Yeah, yeah. You should get an editor on and get get them to go through yeah. one of their scenes. Yeah. Talk then, we'd, then we'd out her, wouldn't we? And that wouldn't be very fair. True, true, true. Well, when we spoke about it a few months ago on Twitter, I think people were on it anyway. People started invest, doing a little investigation. People were on it. Look at that. Yeah. Yeah. Did you see Spike. it, Ben? People were on it, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Well, uh, let's let's let them divert them to Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you both so much for coming on. I really appreciate it. It's been amazing to speak to you both. And, and you take care. Ben, see you later. See you. Bye. See you, see you later. Thanks very much, guys. We will see you next Thursday at eight thirty on YouTube at the Dog in the Pond. <laughs>